you know, I watched the film. It, it was really good. I liked it a lot. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Yeah. So a, it, I just wanted to say, like, the scene towards the end of the movie with um, uh, Chad and uh, Jesse at the table. Yeah. That was that 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 blew me away. It was really good. It was like just so very tense, and it's like the uh, the payoff that uh, I kind of wanted to see at that point in the film, you know. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I thought you know they really go mono a mono there. They did a great job, and uh, it was it was great. And uh, you know, <laughs> it was obviously like a lot of dialogue. So I, I I definitely commend both of them for for getting through that. Uh, you know, that's uh, but they both gave a great performance in that scene, and it was uh, super intense. Would you uh, direct something like that? Do you? just kind of let them go for it and do it and then sort of uh, uh, come back and like give notes or like what kind of a director are you, uh, you know, acting wise? So, I mean, a lot of, a lot of what I do is, you know, like, so I imagine every character is like a blank canvas. And so what I do is I'll take my ideas about the character, the actor will take their ideas about the character and we throw them at the canvas and whatever works for both of us, we use to paint the picture of who this person is. So we'll like create a backstory, all the stuff that's beyond the script together. We agree on that stuff and we start to talk about like, okay, the motivation and all that. Then I let the actor run wild in that world that we've created together. And then from there, I'll shape what they do, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I talk to them in, in, in pre, like in broad strokes and stuff like that, and then I shape it. So, you know, I, in that scene, we talked about where we wanted to start and where we wanted to end, like emotionally. And then like, you know, we talked about the beats we wanted to hit, but I let them take the liberties of kind of where. And then as, as we went through, as we went through takes, I massaged like, okay, well maybe we'd move that up a little bit more to here. What if we have, you know, what if you have you take your turn here? Cause you're starting to manipulate him. It's like a chess match. So it's like, you're manipulating him a little early. Let's see if it, if it lands right there. And I'm not talking about who I'm talking about yet, just because I don't want to give away anything to anybody. Right. right. I'm just saying him, uh, but I'm like, okay, well maybe you're manipulating him there so like you know it's a lot of that so there's a you know i i'm a firm believer that a good director doesn't have to have uh all the best ideas they just have to recognize good ones and so a lot of the times you know yes i come up with my ideas but a lot of the times you know you have these brilliant people that you're working with and so you kind of just shape what they're doing towards the overall vision um, where did you guys shoot this because i mean the locations are perfect it, it fits the film it adds so much to the film Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, the locations give so much production value. We shot this in Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, Puerto Rico. Well, um, a, cause I'm an actor too, and I just know like being on location and uh, being on, loca on location, something like th that setting just adds so much to performances, I feel like. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer. Like, you know, it's, it's one of those things like it's, it's where you can escape, you know, the norm of what you've already done. You know what I mean? So like uh, it, it's it's once you're in that and you're in that world, it's you know, it's easy to stay that because like this is the person you are in this place. Mm -hmm. You know, I think like it, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's a lot of also like, you know, another thing is like when I'm working with actors, I I like to talk in general understandings of what I want their uh, their their wardrobe to be. Uh, and like, you know, I'll send reference pictures and stuff. But then like when they have a fitting. I like them to have multiple options of like a bunch of different stuff. And then they get to kind of choose what they want to wear. Um, because I'm a firm believer that like, that's the first thing they do to get into their character is they put on those clothes in like your, their trailer. So they put on the clothes and that's like part of their ritual of becoming the person. So I like to kind of let them choose like, cause I'm not going to tell them what to wear in real life. So it's like, you know, if this is, you know, if this is how you see, your character and what he would wear I, I like you know I like them to to kind of go from that and personally I really think that it's one of those things that like you know you like as long as they don't go like crazy and they're wearing like a clown costume like you know I kind of let them run wild with it yeah um and uh, you've worked with um Bruce Willis a couple times now this is our second movie together yeah 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 so like the first time you guys worked together, uh, I don't know about you, but I would, were you like at the least bit intimidated? I mean, he's, you know, like Bruce Willis. You, you know, know? I, I, it's, it's weird. Cause I've worked with like a lot of big actors. I mean, Bruce is awesome and he's, he's uh, uh, amazing. Um, and it was a, a blessing to work with him, but I worked with like, you know, uh, 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 Mel Gibson and, and all these different people. And, and, you know, I, what I've learned is I just treat everybody like a person. 
like we're working you know the movie together so like i don't i don't approach people nervously i mean i might internalize that you know but like i'm just like you know when i first saw bruce i was like hey bruce what's up like you know and gave him a high five and it was like hey so i wanted to talk about like it's you know it's the same way i would talk to Mel. so it's yeah, uh, it's the same. It just in general, I think it's, you know, people relate to people. And like, if you're coming up to an actor nervously, uh, they're going to start to be like, oh, crap. Why is he nervous? Like, they, don't, I don't think they think in their mind, like, oh, he's nervous of talking to me. They're like, hey, why is he nervous? Is everything not ready for this movie? Like, so you got to come prepared and, and not be nervous, you know? Uh, and so like, that's kind of uh, where, where I, where I land on, on that. So uh, I have the utmost respect for Bruce as an individual and a, as a performer. Uh, I think he's a, you know, been in some of the most iconic roles we've ever seen. Um, but you know, any, any type of nerves uh, I had to 100% internalize. Uh, but there is like that, you know, there's, there's that moment where he's first on camera that happens anytime I work with any big actor or any actor I even grew up watching in general, they don't even have to be like famous, famous where I, 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 I see them on camera and that's when it like clicks when like I'm shooting the scene and I'm like, holy shit, that's Bruce Willis. You know what I mean? Like you see it, like the, the person on camera, like, oh shit, that's Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it doesn't really click until I think I'm behind the monitor in my own zone of just myself. And, you know, he's in the ultimate Christmas movie ever. So yeah, I, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. But don't tell that to my friend Zach Ward from A Christmas Story, right? Who <laughs> <laughs> was in the first Bruce Willis movie. <laughs> um, you know, you are just like incredibly prolific um like how do you choose like what you're going to work on uh you know i listen i love to work i love to stay busy but i i, I mostly like relating to stories uh, it's uh, it's like a fourfold thing if that makes sense and it's going to sound weird but one i love complex bad guys so if you got like a villain especially a villain that doesn't believe that they're the bad guy uh that's going to definitely attract me to like the movie uh another thing that really attracts me is just um if I'm reading the script and this might sound a little crazy, but if I'm reading the script and I start seeing like in front of me, like, Oh, this is like, I start seeing the shots and I go, well, how would I shoot that? Or like, you know, I start, if I, if I'm reading somebody's script and I go, well, how would I shoot that? That makes me go, okay, well then I want to make the movie. Like if my mind is automatic, because I've had tons of times where I'm just reading it going like, Ugh, just turning pages, like, or whatever. Like if I don't start trying to figure out how I'm going to shoot it, it means like my mind doesn't want to shoot that movie. Uh, and that's just a subconscious thing because I don't like find myself going, oh, how am I going to shoot that? Like stopping to think about it. I just, I, it just naturally starts happening if I'm enjoying the script. Uh, another thing is like, I like, you know, I like stuff that has uh, complicated dynamics with, with like parents. I think that's, you know, something I can relate to. I lost my father recently and uh, it's Sorry. just one of those things that I, uh, I, I've been connecting with. Uh, and, and then lastly, just like, there's weird things about certain movies uh, that, uh, or second to last, sorry, certain movies just trigger things where I'm like, oh man, I can do my, like, my, my, you know, this, for, when I started reading it, I just started going, oh my God, I can do Jurassic Park. I, I was like, I can make the, the whole world look like Jurassic Park above ground. So I got really excited about that. And like, if you notice, actually, in the first scene, I kind of had Bruce dressed up a little bit like Sam Neill from Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. With the hat and stuff. Um, you know, so it, it's one of those things, like I kind of got into that idea. Um, so that started to excite me. But the other thing is like, you know, I like complex heroes that are pe people that are falling apart while trying to put themselves back together in the best way possible. And so like, you know, when I, when I see broken heroes that are trying to just piece together their lives and doing the best they can, uh, that's when I really start to connect with it because I feel like you know, the best stories come from that human uh, flaw. When you're not on set and, and working uh, as a director, how do you manage to be so productive with things? Because I just imagine like when you're home, you're just doing this, 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 and this, and you have so many balls in the air and you're juggling things. Like, <laughs> do you like have like a to-do list and like what, like what's, keep, what's going on? I keep a to-do list. I keep a to-do list. Um, and I, I try to keep everything like driving forward uh, at all times. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm, um, I'm very dedicated to what I do and I really enjoy it. So like, I don't really look at it as work. 
you know? So that's kind of like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. I get like, you know, like I got to do what I love. Like, you know, I love every, the worst moments on set are, you know, are the best moments uh, on any given week. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just like, you know, I, I love what I do. Um, and you have parts in most of the things you direct and other things too, like acting roles. Uh, how do you like acting? So I'm totally not an actor. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've made I've made a lot of jokes about it, uh, but like you know, like when people ask for my director's cut, a lot of the time I, I'll say is like, "Well, the first thing I do is I cut the director out, uh, <laughs> like I'll cut me my out." Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I just kind of find it funny putting myself in like kind of that Hitchcocky type thing of of putting myself in like a one line role or like something here or there. But then every time I see it, I'm like, "Oh man!" Like ah. Uh, I, I, you know, I kind of enjoy it. It's, it's, it's like one of those embarrassing, but also silly things. I find it funny for myself. Like what I would really love to be able to do is like be in my movies in every uh, scene is like the guy with the hot dog cart. You know what I mean? That like, there's like a foot foot chase and like, uh-huh. you know, they, they, they're like, which way did he go? And like, I just go like that. Like I just point to the side, don't say anything, just chilling at my hot dog cart. while like, they're like chasing after a guy. If I had that in every movie, that'd be great. Then I could just be the that way guy. I wouldn't have to do any other acting. <laughs> I feel like you got to do something in every uh, everything you do now because it's like a tradition. Like, you know, yeah. M. Night Shyamalan does it now, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think I'd go as far as like M. Night gave himself like a really big role in that last he one. did, yeah. That was uh, like a big role, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far on my end because like <laughs> I'd be too afraid of like, oh man, I don't know if I could do this. I'd be more inclined to like, you know, stick with like the, the one line, which, you know, in Fortress, I have the classic line of, would you like a water? Which is, you know, that's, you know, how do you, how do you mess that up? Right. <laughs> I mean, hey, those lines are the hardest to do sometimes, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, hey, so when you're um, uh, casting a film, I imagine you like watch a ton of self-taped auditions. So here's the weird part is like, I don't necessarily believe in the audition process. A lot of people do, and, and you know, maybe I'm crazy, but, like, what I really like to do is I, I, I call my, like, casting more like a headhunting casting because what I do is I'll just watch a whole ton of movies leading up to the, and, like, TV shows and stuff leading up to it like indie films, all this different stuff. And then I start to go, I like this person from this movie. I like this person from this. So I start to like make a list of all the people that I liked and stuff that I just watched. That's like, you know, reminds me of kind of the tone that I'm going for. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have to be the same genre. It's like the tone. Like I might watch like some obscure, like art house film that might have a similar tone, but I start to pull different stuff. And then I start to just like try and get in contact with those actors. Well, man, I, I, that's that's a great way to to do it. I've never sort of heard uh, that sort of that going on like that. Well, I just I like doing it like that just because and I'm not talking about names. I'm talking about like literally the whole cast. Like I like doing that a lot, too, just because um, I've had too many experiences where people were fantastic in the room, but weren't great on set. Like, you know, in, a, in, a, in an audition, because they might be really good at that one thing they prepared for for an entire week, but not you. But it doesn't change. Right. Or I've had people that weren't that great in the room because maybe they didn't have the time to prepare or whatever, but they ended up being really great on set. So I, I just don't, or there might've been nerves that were in the room that wouldn't exist on set. So there's just uh, one of those things where I'd rather just see somebody's performances uh, outside of it and go, okay, I could shape it this way. I can do that. And, you know, and, and, you know, I don't necessarily look at somebody and go, oh, you know, this guy played a villain, so he'd be a great villain for me. Like, you know, I, I cast Tom Green as a therapist in a movie before, you know, <laughs> like I, I, you know, I, I kind of just go off of what I think might be good in, in general. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, not to say that I don't do taped auditions or whatever, because, you know, we need to, but, but my favorite way to cast is how I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I guess the few that you do look at, like what stands out that you want to like bring them back in? I have you know, I've always felt that like, self-tapes don't actually need to like I don't always I think a lot of the time actors think that like what you're looking for is like they they want to perform it the exact way that I imagined it right and that's not necessarily true I'd rather somebody make like a bold choice that's really good and it might not be what I thought it might be completely opposite of how I thought it was but then see if I could shape them from what they did to what I wanted and how long that would take 
You know what I mean? Like, can they turn yeah. on a dime and go from this to the, the new one? So, like, I kind of like seeing, you know, something that stands out. Because the thing is, is, like, as an actor, if, if I'm looking at a ton of self-tapes and it's like, okay, this character is supposed to be, like, really angry in this scene, you're going to get maybe 200 self-tapes of somebody yelling at somebody, you know? If somebody does something that's the opposite and they like pull into themselves and they keep it more of an internal anger and they're more seething and it's something like, then you're like, oh, that stands out. I didn't see that. I haven't, everybody else did it one way. This guy did it this way. Let's see, let's see what else this person can do. You know, so I think sometimes making a bold choice that isn't exactly the norm kind of uh, helps an actor stand out in that respect. Yeah, that's in it's interesting and, and like and, and, uh, great answer. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that to heart next time. Um, so, hey, you know, uh, thanks for uh, chatting with me, James. Uh, I can't wait to, to see what you do next. Yeah, oh, I, I thank think you're you great. so much. Thank you so much. And hey, thank you for taking the time to chat with me as well. And uh, thank you for watching Fortress and the kind words. And I hope everybody who watches it enjoys it as much as you did. I'm sure they will. Uh, thanks. And uh, yeah, have a good uh, holiday season, man. Thank you. Happy holidays. Yeah.